10 years. That's for the slide forward backwards, but this one is for the point of reference. Okay. Slide up. Thank you very much. It was worth every minute traveling here. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I agree that we should flow into the future, but you should never forget the basics. And uh, this is a lecture uh, intended for people who are beginning with shoulder surgery, uh, and, but all of us should always keep this in mind. This was a patient, a woman, that uh, consulted his uh, doctor for shoulder pain. He diagnosed uh, subacromial impingement, performed an arthroscopic surgical decompression, but two years later, the patient came back, came back and complaining of pain with this MRI. The doctor advised her to wait because she will need an open surgery. And she waited four years later uh, after the first surgery I met her with this MRI. And what was considered at the beginning a subacromial impeachment in fact was a tuberculous osteoarthritis. And these things happen not only in Argentina, it happens all over the world. This was a study that was even uh, published at the Washington Post that uh, states that most of the Americans will get a wrong or a late diagnosis at least once in their lives. And what, uh, why these things happen? Uh, these things happen because uh, sometimes the examination is not enough good. Uh, the time dedicated to examine the patient is short. We can see here on the left a paper that was analyzing how long last, in average, uh, interview with a doctor in Japan, and it is six minutes. And uh, this was a strike of the doctors in Spain asking for at least 10 minutes to stay with their patients. So it is very difficult to make a good diagnosis with such a short time. We have several steps dealing with the patients, and unfortunately, in the last years, treatment has been overemphasized. Unfortunately, treatment is the step who gives money to the doctors, but we need to be based on a real diagnosis to go ahead with treatment. Dr. Ben Kibler was with us uh, uh, one year ago, and he said that it has been put a lot of effort on developing new treatments, but not the same effort on having a good diagnosis. And if we analyze, for instance, the use of PR PRP in the US in 2016, 25% of the treatments were done in an, uh, in an specific, specified uh, shoulder conditions. So there was no diagnosis. They were just treating a symptom. Uh, we have even analyzed papers uh, in which the authors use uh, shock waves to treat non-calcific tendinopathies of the shoulder, and in 90% uh, of them, the inclusion criteria was incorrect or insufficient. We must keep in mind that the shoulder is an area where refer pain is very common, coming from the neck, coming from different uh, visceral origins. I have seen all of them. Uh, we have seen patients with uh, ruptures of the spleen just complaining of shoulder pain. And we have seen many patients treat like these ones. Uh, we rehab subacromial shots, and in fact, the reason of pain was uh, lung adenocarcinoma again and again. So we must be alert and always think that the pain can come from another source. Uh, we also must consider myofascial pain syndrome. Trigger points can uh, uh, in some way express the pain in the shoulder area. But we can also see many times uh, tumors that produce metastasis uh, in the area of the shoulder. This was a patient that was treated, was sent to rehab with no x-rays because of shoulder pain, and he felt a crack during rehab. In fact, he had a lung cancer metastasis. We also seen patients like this. Uh, he was two times 
operated by arthroscopic way, uh, subacromial decompression, but he always had a lung cancer metastasis in the subacromial space. Uh, and if we consider, for instance, the inclusion criteria of this paper that was done, a study done in Scandinavia, the inclusion criteria is pain on two or three in somatic tests, positive Kennedy Hawkins sign, and the patient I have just shown you would have been included to be treated with rehab if, uh, because they consider that subacromial pain is a diagnosis and it's not a, medic, a, a pathological condition. It's, it is just a, a symptom. Another patient, these are all patients I have seen in my office, 67 years old, rotator cuff partial tear, two surgeons offered him arthroscopic surgery, another surgeon offered him an open surgery, and he came to decide if open or arthroscopic, and you can see here the rotator cuff tear, but we should also see the humeral head, look at the x-ray, many doctors just ask MRIs and not x-rays. I ask him and scintigraphy, and you can see the shape of the proximal humerus, and this patient has had a prostate cancer metastasis. But three orthopedic surgeons offer him to repair the rotator cuff. Another patient, this case is a doctor, 82 years old. He got the diagnosis of greater tuberosity fracture, but fracture, but in fact he had a lung cancer metastasis. So we should always be alert about this. We have also neurologic disease. We should call, remember that 40% of carpal tunnel median nerve compression refers pain to the shoulder. And if we ask an MRI, perhaps we will see a rotator cuff tear, but the patient pain is originated in the carpal tunnel. We don't see very often, once a year, patients with parsonage turner syndromes, but we also should consider that. Syringomyelia is not common, but we also should keep this in mind. Uh, this was a patient, 38 years old, with congenital diabetes. He is, had a very sharp shoulder pain, and the diagnosis was subacromial uh, bursitis, but in fact what he had was a diabetic polyneuropathy. And uh, I could keep on showing you cases the whole morning, uh, multidirectional instability. Sometimes it's very subtle and it's very difficult to uh, realize that we are facing uh, shoulder instability. But on the other hand, this was a professional tennis player that underwent a capsular shift, and in fact what he had was a suprascapular nerve compression. Shoulder trauma can also be confusing, especially rot um, all and reduced dislocation on the posterior way. We can see that sometimes the, the AP X-ray is not clear, but of course the CT scan is very clear. Uh, this was a, this is the only one who is, that is not. A, a, a case of my own, but this is a patient that was in intensive care unit, uh, complaining also of, uh, after a, a, a road trauma, he was complaining of shoulder pain, they took some x-rays, they didn't find anything, and the patient uh, came back a few days later and got another x-ray, and he had a clavicle fracture that was behind the electrodes. So sometimes even, uh, very easy um, diagnosis are not done. Which are the reasons for diagnostic error? Well, shoulder pain is very frequent. And nowadays, many people, uh, besides shoulder surgeons, are involved in treating uh, shoulder pain. Uh, they, are mo they have been described more than 90 differential diagnostics uh, in shoulder pain. Uh, there is a high prevalence of pathological findings in imaging studies. So we see that there is a rotator cuff tear, but in fact there is another thing going on, and another thing that is the reason of pain. Uh, unfortunately, there is, because of the system, a little time devoted to clinical examination. And finally, in some cases, we must confess that there is surgical greed, and we think on what we do, but we don't consider other options. This looks like an Indian building. There is 
uh, Asian elephant there, but this is not India. This is Buenos Aires Zoo. So, so it's a good example of how things that look the same are completely different. Thank you very much.